I'm back. Me too. Go away. You can stay though. What's going on today guys, Weaver Beats here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to do some extremely precise vocal pitch manipulation using Melodyne 5. Melodyne is capable of a few other features as well, but today we'll be focusing specifically on the pitch correction. Before getting to this point with your vocals, you're going to want to make sure you take care of any sort of basic mixing correction you may need to do. De-essing, de-plosive, de-noise, lining up the vocal takes. You guys may remember this project from my secret vocal chain video. I'll link the playlist up here. But today we're going to clean up the pitch even further using Melodyne. It's far more powerful than your average auto-tune plugin. It converts your audio to MIDI unless you manipulate it any way you want. It also is capable of lining up multiple vocal takes to give you a more unified sound, kind of like vocal line. And it's also capable of lowering the dynamic range. Anyways, let's get into the project now. I'll play you guys uh, how it sounds beforehand. Keep my eyes shut, I just want to sleep. Uh, it sounds pretty good so far, but I still feel like the pitch sounds a little funky. But I'm almost certain we can make it sound better than it currently is, because I'm pretty sure it's just locking to a few different notes that it shouldn't be and stuff like that. There's multiple ways to approach this here. We can, we can put Melodyne either on the entire vocal group, or we can put it on individual tracks. We're gonna drag it on the vocal group. You, like I said, you can also put it on the tracks, but I wouldn't recommend doing that right off the bat if you're not super familiar with it. I'm fine with doing it on these vocals in this case because I already have them aligned and whatnot, and uh, basically the tuning is like the only thing it really needs. I'm actually doing the beginning of the chain because I'd rather have it getting tuned before it hits the saturation in this vocal chain here. I'm also gonna put a Melodyne on the instrumental track. Melodyne on the instrumental and on the vocals. And you guys will see why. As you can see, it opened up the plugin here, and there's two different tracks here, the instrumental and the vocals. And hopefully you have your tracks labeled, that way this part should be pretty simple here. So the gold waveform is the waveform that you are editing, and the silver one is the guide. So if we want to select one or the other, we can just click, and you can also control click if you want to select two different things at once. So you could do two golds, you could do a gold and a silver, so on and so forth. You can do this with how many ever layers you have of Melodyne in the project. Okay, anyways, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna transfer in the spot where we're gonna be working on our vocals. For me, it's just gonna be this, uh, this hook section. We could do all three hooks, but honestly, that's just gonna like, that's gonna suck. You can record more than one track at once by uh, pressing on little record buttons here. the MIDI should be in there. And as you can see, it analyzes it to E minor automatically. We have our guide track, which is the silver track here, and that's the instrumental. And I'm pretty sure that's the bass line that it's showing us there. So it's an E minor, clearly. There's the E, there's F sharp, there's G. I think some of those other notes might be kicks or something, or hi-hats. As it says E minor, all the white notes here are E minor. Not the, not the, it's not like correlated to the black and white of your keyboard. It's correlated to the, the scale here. Anyways, let's say you know that it's D minor. You click on the D here, and you go to D minor, or D major, or whatever you want. It also, if you want to know what it analyzes it to, I guess it also analyzed my thing to A minor, but I think it's just going based off the vocals alone. Now, as you can see, our vocals are a little bit off in some spots, which is, that's actually good for this tutorial, because we want to fix it. The first thing you can do is you can select all. You're going to want to make sure you have your vocals selected because we're not trying to do anything with instrumental. Uh, I'm just going to opt to turn it off because there's not really there's not really a big reason to keep it on at this point. We know it's we know it's an E minor. The whole point was just to check the tuning. So we're looking at the vocals here. We got the goal waveform selected. We can drag your notes up and down as you can see and you hear them as you do it. No more. Um, undo the changes there. All these lines in it, they're modulation. That's the modulation. The pitch isn't perfect, as you as you would assume. Let's say you want to move the sense of this one. You select it, and then you can move it over here. You can also adjust the sense by holding down Alt and dragging it. So we can obviously manually fix our, our vocals this way. And what we're doing right now is just we're just uh, fixing the bass pitch. But there's actually a faster way to correct it than this. So let's not do that. This is for suckers. What we're doing right now is for suckers. We can go to edit here, and there's some cool shit here. Uh, let's see, there's macros, and then you can go to correct pitch, quantize time, or note leveling. We're going to correct pitch. We're going to turn on snap the chord scale. That way it snaps everything to the correct scale. But if you don't want it to do that, then, you know, don't turn that on. 
uh, and then include notes that we edited manually. And then we're going to turn up the pitch center. That's uh, what we were correcting earlier. It's hard to say what you want it at because 100% may sound a little robotic. We're just going to do like 75 for now, maybe or 70, somewhere around there. Okay. Okay. So the difference between pitch drift and pitch modulation is that pitch drift is a slow drift in pitch over time. And pitch modulation is more of like quick, sharp, rapid movements. We can change the pitch drift here. I feel like the pitch drift is not as big as a deal as the pitch modulation. So let's just crank it to hundred percent. See what that sounds like. I keep my eyes shut. I just want to sleep. No more war. I just want peace. I actually think that sounds a lot better with it on. Um, I may even do 100%. So it sounds good so far. There's just this one note here that I'm not super into. I think it's this one. If you want to hear what a note sounds like in here, you can just hold down, click on it. Yeah. Like so. Supremely yeah. annoying. Uh, let's drag this down yeah. here. And I'm going to loop that area, the area that I'm working on there. Otherwise, it'll take forever. Up my pockets, getting money anyway. I keep my okay, so that didn't fix it. So we're gonna have to reach for one of the other tools. So let's let's just inspect all of them real quick so you guys can get a feel for them. So there's the main tool, the scroll tool, the zoom tool. These other ones are not really super important. Just the main tool is important here. Now these other ones are all pretty important. They can or they can be important. So this is the pitch tool, pitch modulation, pitch drift, formant. Amplitude, fade, sibilant, time, time handle, attack speed, note separation, separation type tool. But um, we're not going to explore all these tools today, but just the pitch stuff mainly. We're going to go to our pitch modulation. I already know we corrected our pitch drift, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem here. But I'm just going to try turning down the pitch modulation on this one note right here, because I have a feeling that that one's problematic. Either that one or it's the one after it. But anyways, we have that tool selected, and I can just drag on the note yeah. down. And as you do that, you can hear the modulation is lessening in the sound, and you can also see the percentage going down. You can also drag it up if you want, but let's try here what it sounds like at 65% now. Pockets getting money anyway. As you can see, we can see the path of the pitch modulation here. And if we wanted to just correct that one dip, we can. I'm actually gonna show you guys some of the other tools since we're here already, we're, we're this far. We can select the note separation tool here and we can double click just on that peak. You can zoom in more if you want. If you wanna zoom in, you hold down control and use your mouse scroll. But yeah, we can double click just on this little, this little dip right here. The goal here is we're trying to separate the two notes so we can process them differently. But we need them isolated. It shows us the modulation in real time here. You can see there's actually this like little dip where the tuning goes down like that. I'm gonna go back to the modulation tool again and just start tweaking some of these down. Try to get them like a little more flat. I don't want it completely flat though, because if you do, then it'll sound extremely robotic. We're gonna pull out this note separation tool again, do it here and here. As you can see, it pulls apart that note there. I don't think we want that. So I'm gonna pull it back up. Pockets getting money anyway. So let's say you are unhappy with your changes. You can go back and click on a specific note or you can select all of your notes and then you can go to restore original and you can change a specific thing or you can undo all the changes or you can undo all the changes to the entire file. So I don't know, some, sometimes you just can't fix it in Melodyne no matter what you do. Like there's something just off about it. Like the way I said anyway here, something is just off about it. Luckily, we have more than one take here. We have the second time around here and I set it a little bit different. Now I'm gonna try to not overly tweak it because it sounds pretty okay to me at the moment. So I'm gonna just delete that part. So you can do it just like that in Melodon or you can do it in your DAW after. My heart goes out to whoever has to edit this. My heart has to, <laughs> I'm the one who has to edit this. Sometimes some things can be a little bit and it'll be okay. By the times, no. But okay, we got, we got our audio here. I think it's all good. Let's listen to the whole hook back one more time. I keep my eyes shut. I just want to sleep. No more war. I just want peace. I'll be MIA. I'll see you in a day. I'm filling up my pockets, getting money anyway. All right, there we go. Then we got that whole hook section with both passes. Let's say we're completely happy with it and we wanna put it on the other parts of our song. We can do what we did earlier and copy paste it. Go to the section we would do it at. As you can see, it pasted it in there for us. 
And then we can do the same thing for the third one here. Or you can just freeze and flatten it. That's another way to do it. So there's something cursed about Melodyne. It's just impossible to do a good tutorial on it. I've tried, like this is like my sixth time in my life doing a video or stream trying to teach people this. And I think I finally gotten to a point where I could teach people it, but at this point now it's just, it's just glitching out now. That's, it, it's just like, there's like some sort of like curse with this software that just makes that hard to teach people. I don't even know how I learned it to be honest. Like that, I, must, I blacked out one night and just learned it. So I don't know. Maybe I got a spell cast on me. I don't know exactly how I learned this software. Incorporated.